What's up hobby friends and welcome to the capstone or endstone video of my Blood Angels painting series. And this is just my 10 tips on how I approach speed painting an army or painting an army faster. 10 tips, 10 minutes, let's see if I can do it. Let's dive right on in. So the first tip is understanding your goals. Why are you looking to either speed paint your army as fast as possible, or at the very least speed of the process like what I tend to do? So whether you're painting on a deadline, you're trying to get your army done for a tournament, or you just want to spend as little time as possible doing it because like me, you hate army painting, it's important to understand what your end goal is so that you can better configure or build your steps in your process to achieve that goal. So tip number two is to paint a test model. Part of what slows down a lot of my painting process is too many unknowns or too many variables. If I have to think and experiment along the painting process, that means I'm not assembling line models, which slows down the entire painting process and therefore I'm not really painting quickly. So what you wanna do is you wanna paint a couple of test models. You wanna figure out your process. You wanna make sure that you have all your steps, all your painting mixes all lined up and you're making it less about experimentation and more a sort of paint by numbers process. You wanna make it muscle memory so that you are just grinding out your models. And importantly as well, if you're painting to a schedule or a deadline, you need to know how long a model, a unit or a tank is gonna take you. Knowing that right at the very beginning allows you to schedule in order to see if you can even reach that deadline. Tip number three is the three foot rule. When your models are destined for the tabletop, the typical viewing distance is about three to four feet away. So when you're painting to that standard or expectation, anything that isn't immediately visible or high impact that would enhance the model at that viewing distance probably doesn't need to get done with the exception of heroes, characters, or maybe centerpiece models or monsters that you want people to view more up close because it draws more attention. Tip number four, assemble a project box. Because you're trying to grind up the armies and make it all about muscle memory, you want to make the process as much step by step as possible, or pretty much like a paint by numbers. You're just going from left to right, top to bottom, or at least that's the way I organize my painting box. You want to eliminate mixing as much as possible, only when necessary, and you want to make your color recipes as easy and as consistent to replicate, especially for future proofing when you want to revisit the army. One of the problems with mixing is it tends to create these color variations that become difficult to replicate, especially years down the road if you haven't painted the models in a long time or if the paint company changes their recipes for particular mixes. Tip number five, assembly line. I typically paint for an army five to 10 models at once. 10 is my upper limit. If a unit ends up being more than 10 models, I'll break it up into two even numbers. And usually what I want to do is I want to do all the steps on one model. And then by the time it finishes on the last one, it'll have dried on the first model, and I can essentially cycle through. I find it more efficient this way because you're laying down one color or step at a time instead of balancing four or five colors on your palette for a single model. It's also less wasteful because your paint doesn't dry as often for all those extra steps. You're just doing one thing at a time. Muscle memory, you go through all of those models that one color, and then your second color, and your third, and so on and so forth. Tip number six, when it comes to fixing your mistakes, you want to try and paint your models or develop your painting process in a way where you're able to correct your mistakes as you go. So very often you're painting from an inside out approach. So on a Space Marine, I might do the metallic ribbing and the joints first. And then my next step might be then to go paint the armor so that as I'm painting the armor, I'm correcting any overpaints. And then from there, maybe I'll paint the weapon casings. So the black on a bolter will then cover up silver overpaint and then detail work. I also like to incorporate a check and fix mistakes at the very end where I go for any glaring issues and I do my best to avoid fixing any minor issues or mistakes as I'm painting along the way. Nothing slows down a process then as you're assembly lining a certain color you have to jump back in and correct other minor things. So I usually try and again develop the painting process so I am correcting mistakes as I go and then incorporating at the very end, fixing the mistakes. Tip number seven, make sure that you are setting a painting schedule that is reasonable and doesn't burn you out. I'm not 21 anymore. I can't paint for 12 to 18 hours in a single session. My most has been 36. 
So what I like to do is schedule breaks every couple of hours, go to the bathroom, stretch out. Maybe I'll take a break and get some food and do a workout. And then even when I'm painting, I try and break up the monotony. I'm not just painting rack and file over and over again, but I'll mix it up every time I finish a unit, I'll then paint a tank, and then I'll paint a here after that before going back to a unit. That way I'm not just grinding through the same thing over and over again. Tip number eight, cheat as much as possible. Whether it's using a technique or a recipe or a process that lets you achieve the look you want, you wanna make sure that you can do it as fast as possible. So whether it's using things like oil washes, your airbrushing, your base coats, and some of your highlights, using weathering powders to add narrative and texture and basically hide mistakes or unpainted areas. And then my personal favorite, you want high contrast. I'll typically do very strong highlights in the front of the model, deep shadows in the back. And this way, I'm not really doing any painting on the back. It's mostly on the front. And even then, it's only, only on the front half from the waist up is where I'm applying all of my highlights. The head, top of the shoulders and chest is where most of the detail is. And that's where you want to spend all of your attention. The addition as well, when you're building your models, do they really need all those bits? Every bit that you add is a lot more painting time because you have to consider base coats, shading, highlight. And then it's important as well, when you're cheating, recognize the pros and cons. A lot of people love contrast and what they're calling the slap chop method. I'll talk about it in another video. I have a lot to rant about it, but essentially, I think contrast paints are one of those things that you have to caveat that there are cons to it. You have to be very careful, requires really good brush control, very difficult to correct, and future proofing or updating down the road can be difficult. My ninth tip, not really a tip, more just knowledge or understanding. Painting techniques, there isn't a real shortcut to painting faster. You're not gonna watch a video that's gonna magically make you blend faster or edge height faster. Um, people that have those videos are just selling you snake oil. Honestly, if you wanna paint faster, you practice, practice, practice. Uh, the more you master a technique, the faster and the better you're gonna get at it. So if you wanna be able to paint faster, especially when it comes to an army, paint often. The more familiar you are with basic techniques like blending, glazing, edge highlighting, the more you do it, the faster you're gonna get. And then my last and 10th tip, mental fortitude. This comes down to knowing yourself, knowing what keeps you going, knowing what will set you back or what will create a mental hurdle or a roadblock for you. So for myself, it's needing that continuous dopamine hit of finishing models and seeing a, a completed part of the project to be able to keep going and to push myself. I find that the longer I work on a project without finished results to show for it, the more likely that I will fail and not finish the project. So very often when I am working on an army, I wanna finish a unit, hero, tank, monster, um, get that thing done and then tackle something else. For you, if it's getting all of one step done on your entire army and then wrapping it up all at the end and having that big massive hit of here's my completed project, sure. But it's all about knowing what works for you and building your process around that. It's just something that comes with time and being comfortable with yourself. So that wraps up this video. Uh, short and quick, hopefully it, it was under 10 minutes or at least 10 minutes for the tips. Realistically, painting should be fun, even if it is grinding an army. And even if you don't hate it, like myself, I love playing games and I don't like playing with unpainted models. So grinding through armies is just something I have to deal with. And I do my best to make it as fun and interesting and most importantly, as quick as possible so I don't have to do it for very long. If you find that it starts to become a chore, it starts burning you out and you really don't feel motivated to do it, Honestly, don't do it. Don't tackle that army all at once, or maybe it's just not worth tackling at that particular point in time. Nothing's worse than burning yourself out and then not painting at all for months and months or even years on end because you found that you burned yourself out constantly grinding through armies. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out the social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, happy holidays.